Thank you for attending this webinar sponsored by NEC Corporation. To learn more about the Programmable Flow Networking Suite featured in these use cases, please contact your NEC account rep today or go to NEC Corporation of America's website at www.necam.com sdn. To find additional SDN, OpenFlow, and Network Function Virtualization resources, visit ipspace.net slash SDN. You know that traditionally you either deploy an IPS on an ingress switch or you deploy an IDS appliance and then these two become choke points. And then if you have a combination of an out-of-band IDS and you would want to use data from that IDS to block particular flows on the switch, it's pretty hard to do. Unless you have Juniper gear, for example, where you can use BGP flow spec to dump particular flows, which is what, for example, I think Cloudflare is doing in their network. What you can do with OpenFlow is very similar to the load balancing use case. First, you can use an OpenFlow switch to distribute the load based on source IP addresses or whatever you wish, the same thing as in load balancing use case, to spread the load across multiple IDS instances. You figure out either statically or dynamically where the traffic is coming from, and then you split that traffic to IDS instances, or you can add a controller that would read those statistics and adjust flow granularity in real time. And the beauty of this approach is that you know that every appliance will receive all traffic from a particular set of endpoints. Whereas if you just use the normal five tuple load balancing here, one appliance might receive traffic coming from this client from one session, and another appliance might receive traffic coming from this client but sent through another session. With this approach, you first are able to distribute the load across appliances. You can dynamically adjust what you're sending to each appliance, and you ensure that every appliance has full visibility into the traffic that it is monitoring. And of course, then the appliances can tell you, well, you know, we think we have detected a denial of service attack. At which point you would get this data from the appliances and you know the story, REST API here, the appliances through either by themselves or you write a small script here or you do whatever integration they trigger API calls that tell the controller that we need to modify the flow list here on the ingress port to install a drop entry. If you use programmable flow, we've already discussed this, the appliances and your script, they don't have to worry about the exact ingress edge port. They just tell programmable flow controller that they need this particular filter for this particular tenant and then the programmable flow controller will figure out where that tenant is, where the optimal edge port is, and deploy the filters automatically on that particular edge port. And then, of course, you can do the distributed denial of service prevention solution. So instead of putting these appliances in the forwarding path, what you could use is you install, depending on how much TCAM you have in the OpenFlow switch, a number of flow forwarding entries pointing from outside to inside, and then you monitor the traffic on these flows. And the moment you get a hotspot, you say, oops, let me redirect this to a denial of service prevention appliance or traffic scrubbing appliance. And that appliance would then clean out the traffic, remove the denial of service attacker, and send the rest of the traffic into your data center. So the idea is that you install sort of coarse-grained forwarding entries into the OpenFlow switch. Then the controller starts collecting automatically that data. We covered that in the first use case. And then you need a controller 
usually supplied by the denial of service scrubbing vendor. This controller would monitor the flow entries, it would detect anomalies, and it would then tell the OpenFlow controller, you know what, I want to see that traffic in more details. Do send it over to me, and you would install the traditional traffic redirection. We discussed that already. And a scrubbing appliance would start receiving the traffic that could be potentially a denial of service attack. So, why would you do this? Very simple. You don't have to buy the appliances that can inspect whole bandwidth that you have to word the internet. You can buy simpler or cheaper appliances and use them as needed. A really good question. How is the OpenFlow controller itself protected against denial of service attacks? What if attacker generates many OpenFlow connect traffic? Well, first, you have to remember that the OpenFlow controller is not connected to the outside world. So the OpenFlow controller is ideally sitting in a separate out-of-band control plane network and it only receives the traffic from the switches. So the only thing that the OpenFlow controller does is it receives traffic that the switches send to it. The switches can only send the unknown traffic, well, the switches would only send the traffic that the controller wants to see to the controller. And at least with programmable flow switches, you can rate limit the amount of the packets that the switch will send to the controller. So you have sort of control plane protection between the switch and the controller. And in any case, the switches cannot send that much traffic to the controller because as I said before, there is a bottleneck between the forwarding fabric and the CPU in the switch. If you did the design right, and if your OpenFlow controller is sitting in a totally separate, isolated control plane network, and if you use switches that can do rate limiting on the messages sent to the controller, I don't see how a controller would, in a regular scenario, become a target of a denial of service attack. Of course, if someone manages to get into the control plane network, or if you use in-band control plane, or if the switch would forward some traffic from data plane into the control plane network, then you have a problem. But that's a problem of bad design. That's not a problem of the architecture. Question from Bob. When the switch punts to the controller, does the actual data frame get forwarded or just a flow tuple describing the flow? The switch sends the whole data frame to the controller. Well, the first thing you have to keep in mind is that sometimes the controller has to forward that traffic to the actual destination. You don't want to lose the first TCP packet, for example, and wait for retransmission. So that's the first reason why the controller needs the whole packet. And secondly, if you're implementing control plane protocols, then obviously the controller needs to see the whole control plane packet. So in most cases, the switches send full packets to the controller. To learn more about the award-winning NEC Programmable Flow Networking Suite or the complete SDN ecosystem NEC is building with partners and how you can customize these use cases for your own networking needs, call your NEC account rep today or go to NEC Corporation of America's website at www dot n-e-c-a-m dot com slash s-d-n. Thank you for your time and interest in NEC. Additional SDN, OpenFlow, and Network Function Virtualization webinars, recordings, and workshops, as well as other resources like books and case studies, are waiting for you at ipspace.net slash s-d-n.